Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody is having a great day. So just to get it out of the way, if you guys have a story, please send it in. Uh, I'd love to read it. Hit the like button, the bell for notifications, and subscribe. Now, on with the story. Okay, so this one was sent in by someone who wishes to remain anonymous. And here we go. At age 26, I spent time on a family trip to Medford, Oregon. It was a sultry and humid summer, and we were struggling as a family at the time. We decided to leave our small town in Utah and visit my uncle and aunt, who were retired in Medford. I was a young, healthy man at the time with no commitments, no wife or children. I had a lot on my mind at the time. I was a long-distance runner and decided to take a run and take some time alone. I was not really sure which direction I would take, but I had a small fanny pack with a bit of food and water. I also had a camel pack because I planned to spend the day out and about. I started out on Summit Avenue and eventually ended up on Taylor Road. I was still in town, but I wanted to try and get up in the mountains, so I kept going for about a mile to Old Stage Road. I don't remember the small lane, but it started with a P, and I followed it straight up into the Gold Hill area. Seems irresponsible, I know, but like I said, I had a lot on my mind, and the beauty of that area captivated me. At the end of the small lane, I found myself close to the top of the ridge. I started my run about 6 a.m., and it was close to noon. So I sat down and had a snack and water. The air was tantalizing, and the smell of the forest was totally intoxicating. I wanted to get to the top of the ridge and find the best view I could. I didn't think it would take long. I started hiking off trail right up towards the summit through some thick forest. The hike was extreme and I barely made it to what I thought was the ridge. But when I arrived, I saw another ridge with what seemed to be a road. Curiosity killed the cat and got the best of me, so I trekked off to the distant road. I reached the road at the top of the ridge where I had an awesome view of the Rogue River. I could also see an open area of dirt and salty looking material where some strip mining of some kind was happening. So, against better judgment, I thought I was very close to civilization and I thought I would follow this dirt road back down the mountain. Well, it didn't go down the mountain. It just continued along the ridge line. Hours had passed and I was out of food, but I had water and a camel pack, but that was almost out too. So I turned around in an attempt to retrace my steps. Big mistake. I thought I had retraced my steps back to the ravine. I thought I had climbed up. I started to descend and fell down a short cliff and hit my head, which knocked me out cold. When I awoke, the sun had started to set. I was still on a steep hillside, but a large tree had stopped me from continuing to fall. I wrestled to get my bearings straight. The sunset was amazing. Deep purples blended in an increasingly blackening sky. I felt overwhelmed by a rotten smell of some kind. It reminded me of a really bad milk that has been left out of the fridge for way too long. I tried to get up to my feet and get stable so I could figure out where I was. I had a lot of blood tripping down my face, so I wiped my eyes with my hand and when I opened my eyes, I saw this massive animal with its arms and legs wrapped around a large tree like a gorilla but its feet were not wrapped all the way around the tree. It was using the insides of its feet to hold itself onto the tree, kind of like natives do when they're climbing up coconut trees. And the feet were very large and human-looking. It was only about 25 feet away from me. It just stared at me and didn't move a muscle. A cold and dark fear came over me. 
that I will not forget to this day. The hair was beautiful all around the body, head, fingers, and the top of its feet. The sunset was lighting up the furry hair to a brilliant red color. The skin around its eyes, nose, and mouth was hairless and dark gray. His fingernails were a similar dark gray, which really made them stand out and for some reason made his hands very frightening to me. Maybe because they were so massive and human-looking? I could clearly see its eyes because he stared so intently at me, as though he wanted to kill me. They were dark brown, and the pupils were very dilated and jet black. I couldn't see the whites in his eyes, just dark brown. His nostrils flared as he breathed, and they seemed like dark caverns. His mouth was strangely broad with an even broader lower jaw. There really was no neck and he held his head low. It was getting darker and I wanted to get out of there. So I began to slowly move my way up the mountain and he just kept his eyes fixed right on me. The feeling was horrific. The fear I cannot describe. I continued and he stayed perfectly petrified. No movement except for his deadly eyes. I got anxious and began moving more quickly. I kept my body and face towards him, which caused me to begin moving up the hill backwards, resulting in the, me tripping over a log in a sudden jerking movement. At that moment, he leapt from the tree at a speed towards me. I cannot even describe his decisive leap was extremely accurate because he landed nearly on top of me. Mind you, that would have been a 25-foot span to cover through the air at least. When he landed, he was straddling me with one foot at the left of my legs and the other foot at the right. He squatted over me with his hands on his knees. At that moment, I decided my life was over. With his massive hand, he reached down towards my waist, wrapped his banana-like fingers around my fanny pack, and ripped it apart. He seemed to be looking for food of some kind. He did the same thing with my camel pack, smelling the items and tasting them with his huge tongue. I stayed as quiet as I possibly could during this ordeal. He continued to hover over me, breathing deeply through his massive nostrils. His chest was huge and made me feel like he could crush me instantly. He started smelling one side of my body, my left arm, and my left leg. He moved to my right leg, and when he got to my right arm, he took a bite with no hesitation. The bite was crushing and excruciatingly painful. His entire mouth fit around my forearm, and I could hear my bones crushing. He instantly stood up, and I could see my lower arm and hand in his mouth. It took me time to realize he severed my arm in one quick bite. At once, he jumped towards another large tree and grabbed it with his massive arms and stood on the side of the tree using the insides of his feet. It was horrifying. He looked back at me with my lower arm still in his mouth and then jumped to the forest floor. I could hear him running through the trees. I stayed quiet and still, holding my arm and writhing in pain until I could no longer hear the animal running away. And I do call this beast an animal. He may have human features, but so do a lot of other primates but that don't make them human. Humans don't eat other humans, period. I get very tired of hearing people talk about these animals like they are wild men. Not so. They are simply wild animals that eat big mammals. And when hungry enough, that includes us. Anyway, I got up, and by this time it was dark. I started hiking as best as I could up to the road. I attempted to walk along the road, 
and I walked until it was very late and I began to feel too weak. I was shocked and amazed when I saw headlights. A United States Forest Service jeep was inspecting the area and found me nearly passed out alongside the road. I came to find out later that he was searching for a Bigfoot, but he didn't call it a Bigfoot. He called it something that sounded like nefarious or netarious. I don't remember. He said something about their habitat and how a few were losing their land and food source, resulting in them searching for food closer to human settled areas. I guess I was the first big food source this animal had come across in a while. What I don't understand is why he didn't eat me entirely. He was big enough to have done so. He had to have been ten feet tall. I was taken to the hospital, of course. My story was not believed. It was decided by the doctors that a cougar had attacked me, though no claw marks were found anywhere on my body, just my missing arm. And that, my dear friends, is the end of that story. You know, I can honestly say that Bigfoot cannot be put into one category. Similar to human beings, eh? We've got good ones and we've got bad ones. We've got tall ones, short ones, fat ones, thin ones, dark ones, light ones, all different hair colors. And that sounds like every story we hear about a Bigfoot. Anyways, guys, I think I'm going to finish that here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your time with me because you know I enjoyed my time with you. Don't forget, send in your stories if you have them. Also, if you like animal attack stories, check out my new channel. I'll leave a link in the description box. And it's just simply called Animals Attack. Okay, guys, I'll see you back here in a couple of days. Bye for now.